Yves Saint Laurent's four couture collections from the 1980s encapsulated his signature blend of bold, luxurious styles with a strong, feminine elegance. During this period, his collections were marked by a celebration of opulence and a return to glamour, in contrast to the minimalist trends of earlier years. Let's talk about it. Fall 1982 the hats. This bright and colorful collection was full of allusions and reminiscences and details from earlier collections. It conveyed a kind of enchanted enchantment as, San Diego Magazine put it. Adding, Yves Saint Laurent, who has an unbelievable gift for feeling the pulse of his times, marched into center stage with his incredible collection. His show which is always the high point of the collections, reserved many of his previous themes and led us into a spirited, fun-filled view of today's life. He seemed to be saying, let's not be earnest, life is too short, and boredom is the greatest sin of all. The sophisticated, brightly colored suits, tight-waisted and with narrow skirts, were all adorned with basques of various shapes and sizes. The real novelty, according to French Vogue, was the effect created by the basques attached to the upper part of the skirt, usually a pencil skirt, to accentuate the idea of an open flower. The bicolor effects were also apparent in the cutouts and the yokes, in a further eulogy to the hips of the woman as flower. The needlework was intricate, as seen in a short evening dress in fi and silk velvet patchwork, made by André Brossin de Mir, and a deep blue bolero, whose elegance was underlined by sky blue gloves. Prints were a constant of Saint Laurent's and appeared again here on draped scarves and dresses in leopard skin designs. The hats were complex and varied, and the hairstyles highly elaborate, Alexandra's Hollywoodian hairstyle for Yves Saint Laurent's four couture collection gave the first nod to Toulouse Lautrec's vivacious Kenkan girls, said Women's Wear Daily. The atmosphere generated by this collection was a kind of joie de vivre, an antidote to stress and anxiety, both frivolous and magnificent. According to Saint Laurent, haute couture is opera, and, like opera, it has to be superb. Fall 1983, Paris In this collection, Yves Saint Laurent was paying homage to Paris, specifically, to the prestige of Paris as I knew it when I first arrived. That is why it reflects many things from my youth, my first sensations when I arrived in Paris from Algeria, he explained to French Vogue. Fur took pride of place in the day wear, with toques and coats adorned with the most lavish skins. This was a return to chic clothes, to the art of dressing. It was a rejection of sloppiness, as Saint Laurent pointed out in Vogue. The colors were warm eggshell russet, caramel, sand and camel, while the cuts were loose and offered room to breathe. The collection was also marked by the use of another color, pink. Saint Laurent often said that pink was his favorite color, aside from black, and there were some lovely examples of it here. For day wear, fuchsia pink brightened an otherwise classic coat. For evening, a soft pink was used to drape a short dress and to adorn the back of a black velvet sheath dress with a giant bow. According to the special haute couture edition of Votre Beauté, Votre Sante, the latter was a certain pink neither shrimp nor fuchsia, nor button rose, nor salmon, nor peach, a Paris pink, as Yves Saint Laurent, christened it in honor of his latest perfume, Paris which reflects the spirit and the letter of the winter 83-84 haute couture. 
The formal evening wear included borrowings from historical costumes, with voluminous garments such as a yellow domino cloak, that was reminiscent of the long capes, worn in the 18th century by those wishing to attend masked balls in secret, their face concealed by the hood. The show concluded with an apparition, a bride adorned with bird of paradise plumes. In her hands was a bottle of Paris, the most recent perfume, invented by the couturier, with tender and elegant notes, as a tribute to the City of Lights and to the Parisienne Saint Laurent was dressing. Fall 1987, Feathers The year 1987 was marked by the Yves Saint Laurent retrospective at the New South Wales Museum of Sydney, and it was also the 25th anniversary of the Couturier's first collection. That autumn, Saint Laurent allowed the body to move freely in quite simple and impeccable sweater dresses, according to Votre Beauté France. These are covered by wide, straight pelisses trimmed with locks or mink. The suits were classic, while the black velvet jackets embroidered with golden bows ribbons, and even mice by Lesage looked to dazzling. Ribbons that turn into embroidery, fluttering leathers that envelope a shivering body. Flowing dresses, were sometimes draped at the side and accessorized with hats in a variety of totally original forms. Under the expert hands of the magician, the drapery falls fluidly and intangibly, the leathers soar, like myriads of fantastic bodies. Evening wear tended to feature ostrich and bird of paradise leathers like one fluffy, 
short dress designed with a very light touch, while capes were adorned with rooster leathers from Lomae. Saint Laurent also designed a bolero cape in ruffled taffeta made by Bianchini, worn over a sheath dress, which created a striking contrast. Saint Laurent seemed to be aiming for a lightier, slightly more sophisticated, less ambiguous woman. According to Jour de France, some of his marabou leather designs are reminiscent of Zizi Jean Mer's famous True N Plumes leathered outfit. At times the colors were very bright and played on contrasts, like the skirt suit all red silk satin over a mauve blouse topped with a violet hat. Fall 1988. The Grapes. For this season, Yves Saint Laurent proposed the embodiment of a conquering and victorious feminine power. Once again, the couturier borrowed his codes of power from the masculine wardrobe. Like a chameleon, the Saint Laurent woman adapted herself to every context. 
Her sensuality was communicated via attitudes or attributes, not via her exposed body. Saint Laurent drew on the symbols of power of traditional and venerable institutions. Accordingly, large gold crosses or purple gloves referenced the clergy. The lapel of the tuxedo dress, with its impressive shoulders was decorated with the red ribbon of the Legion of Honor. There were cascades of pearls at the shoulder or waist reminiscent of the foragiers, and sashes of military uniforms. The gold lame capes that revealed nothing but the face harked back to royal or religious ceremonial wear. Following on from the previous season, the couturier excelled in his color harmonies and use of embroidery. This time he paid tribute to the painter Pierre Bonnard, in the form of an embroidered jacket whose technical wizardry rivaled that of the artist's chromatic compositions. An important series of designs embroidered by the Lesage workshops, was based on the visual and symbolic theme of grapes. Heralding the premises of 1990s fashion, the couturier now presented padded paletot jackets of matelassé silk satin, dresses with a heart-shaped décolletage that plunged to the waist, extravagant fur coats, and tuxedo mini dresses, that looked like deconstructed forms of jackets. The youthful insolence has faded. What remains is the enthusiasm and the desire to raise couture to the height of art, declared the press. By the use of all these attributes, this collection symbolized the recognition of the sacred power of the feminine. Again, according to the press, no one is better than Yves Saint Laurent at making observations of his time. So, key elements of YSL's 80s full couture collections included 1. Power dressing YSL embraced the era's power dressing trend with sharply tailored suits, often featuring exaggerated shoulders, strong silhouettes, and broad lines. These designs empowered women, reflecting the growing presence of women in professional spheres. 2. Luxurious fabrics and embellishments. Rich fabrics like velvet, brocade, and silk dominated the collections, along with elaborate embroidery, sequins, and beaded details, adding a lavish, dramatic flair. 3. Opulent colors Bold colors like deep purples, rich reds, golds, and jewel tones were prominent. YSL played with color blocking and intricate patterns, infusing his collections with a sense of artistic boldness. 4. Exotic Influences YSL often drew inspiration from global cultures, especially Morocco. His 1980s couture shows frequently reference traditional costumes and historical fashion, reinterpreting them with a modern twist. 5. Dramatic Evening Wear his evening gowns from the era were grand and theatrical, featuring voluminous skirts, elaborate draping, and a blend of classic and avant-garde elements. While his work was widely praised, some critics argued that the 1980s marked a period where Saint Laurent began to repeat many of his earlier ideas, relying on tried and true silhouettes from his past work. Nonetheless, his couture collections of the 1980s were commercially successful and influential in setting trends for high fashion. In summary, Yves Saint Laurent's work in couture during the 1980s was characterized by opulence, boldness, and a refined balance of masculine and feminine aesthetics. He continued to shape the fashion industry through his exploration of power dressing, vibrant color palettes, and luxurious, dramatic designs that reflected the excess of the era. In essence, YSL's 80s full couture collections were all about opulence, empowerment, and embracing the bold spirit of the decade, with elegance and artistic sophistication.